Well, uh, first of all, thank you everyone for showing up. That's, that's always nice. Um, how did this start? Very briefly, this started with a conversation with Pamela Brown uh, about doing public art in the Carolinas because that's what I do and I'm a cyclist. And a lot of the work I do involves uh, athletes and specifically cycling. And uh, to shorten long story, she sent me a photo of this wall. And I fell in love with this wall because it's perfect for a piece of public art from a muralist's perspective. And she put me in touch with Ty Haug. And when I told him what I did, he described what was happening here with the Greenways system and the Swamp Rabbit Trail specifically, and that he had been hoping for someone like me <laughs> to call up and, and present some ideas. And so we continued throwing ideas around until we uh, set on doing a public art collection along Swamp Rapid Trail. And what our vision is, is to create a, a model as the greenway systems move across state lines and across the country that the combination of public art and, um, and greenway trail go together uh, with them. Yay. And that Greenville uh, is is the model for the first trail of this kind that has art as a natural component with it so that it can be adapted and exported um, until uh, people when they think of greenway trails and find out that there is one in the community they expect to see some really wonderful public art as they bike and run and so forth and what I wanted to talk about is that while I was working on this piece, what surprised me so much was that as I would look here on the trail, the people who would pass me were from every walk of life. Every segment of society in Greenville is out here on this trail. And I've seen people dribbling basketballs while they run, all kinds of skating and skateboarding and um, my favorite uh, was seeing a group of nuns power walking in full habit from head to toe. And I thought, well, you know, there are the guys out here that are in Lycra from head to toe, and they're, they're going to try and break a land speed record and upload it to Strava. And there are runners who are out here training for their first marathon to prove to themselves and themselves alone that 45 is just a number. And then there are nuns who have decided that being fit is the best way to honor their creator for giving them a miraculous body that allows them to power walk. <laughs> and then I thought, as I use this trail myself and ride my bike up and down it, that you can kind of lose yourself here, that you get to just be. And I'm sure that everyone has heard the, the philosophical joke of to do is to be, to be is to do, and then Frank, Frank Sinatra says dooby dooby doo. And at some point out here while you're running or jogging or skating, you get to stop being the human doing and can just be a human being looking at the squirrel or the red birds or whatever it is. And when people say, well, why art? Why is art important? We don't need art. Art doesn't do anything. And people will say, well, you know, design, form follows function, and, and elegant design is great, but art, art, you don't need art. But that's what art is about. It's about being. Art just exists because human beings are amazing because they are. What you choose to do with your life is something else again. But out here, you can just be, and art places, public art places the human spirit in the landscape to remind you that you can't just be for your own sake and that that is worthwhile. So I'd like to thank especially the Daniel Mickle Foundation. Katie Howell is here to represent Scott. I lost Scott. There's Scott. This, this is Scott's wall. <laughs> he, he allowed us to do this to it. Um, and of course, Pamela, thank you for <laughs> sending me that photo and, Yay. and Ty <laughs> for doing all the nuts and bolts. Um, 
so I guess, uh, would you like to say some things about you go. Well, thank you, and, and I'll keep it brief because Kathleen put it really well, but I just wanted to kind of echo is it's, it's another great example of how exciting it is to be in Greenville, Greenville County, how we just say, this makes sense just to do, and we have an easy opportunity to work in our community to make it happen, and you're right, you're absolutely right. People could come down here and say, why are you doing this when you could be doing something else, but this is part of our community. It's what we do, it's what makes our community neat. It's what, um, at least in my profession, I'm finding is other communities are saying, how'd you do that? And I'm almost shocked that I have the challenge to find an answer. I'm like, well, aren't all communities kind of like call a friend and somebody knows somebody else and say, hey, that's a good idea, let's make that happen and let's work it out. All too often in government, it's like, well, you gotta have all these forms that say, I will not do this and I will do this and I gotta follow this format. I think in Parks and Rec, we're a little more laid back. So um, I'm excited that Scott said, sure, no problem. I'm also excited that Scott said, sure, I'll buy an empty warehouse in the middle of nowhere, and we see what happens here. So I uh, appreciate that job security. I um, appreciate what the community does, and I'm just thankful that my day job involves being part of the community and interacting with them. And to make it official, since we put the ribbon, this is not part of the mural, um, I'd like to invite Katie Howell to come up, and I'd like to invite Charlie to come up, yeah. Scott McCurry's granddaughter. Um, oh. And I'm going to steal Kathleen's quote here real quick, but um, I thought it was great, so if I get it wrong, Kathleen, fix, fix it for me. Okay. She said to me, she says, Charlie's generation actually will be the first generation that will never know Greenville without Greenways. And it's, really, it's kind of cool to think about. I mean, we can say, yeah, this generation will never know rotary dial phones. <laughs> but this generation will grow up and say, we've always had Greenways. You know, it was never like, oh, how did we get around Greenville besides a car before? It's like, we've always been able to get around Greenville without a car. We've always been able to get out into our communities. And so we'll step over. I want to hand it over to Katie for a little bit because, um, it, like I mentioned, it's kind of one of those things I called her and she said, okay, this makes sense, but kind of want to get it from the horse's mouth here and say why she got involved with it. <laughs> the Daniel Mickle Foundation has always supported or tried to support arts and culture in the Greenville community and the surrounding community. And so when Ty called me, presented this opportunity and then connected me with Kathleen who talked to me about her vision of public art on the trail. We were all very excited because this is exactly what we like to see spreading throughout our community and I'm really happy to see all of you here today because what we hope that you will do is go out into the community and talk about Kathleen's vision and so thank you Ty for making that opportunity available. Thank you Kathleen for giving this to our community. Yay! <laughs> We're not the big gold scissors. Thank you guys very much. This is good. Oh, 